Hey YouTube, it's Sean, Griffin RC Planes. Did you notice the switch? Look at uh, look at these uniforms. Can't say thank you enough to Ken. Ken is one of uh, one of us, and he said, "Hey, would you mind if I send you something?" And I said, "No, I don't mind at all." So he sent me probably one of the most awesomest gifts I've ever got. He sent me this long sleeve uh, uniform and a short sleeve, which is more of a kind of a blue green color. I'll show show that one to you guys in the next couple of videos. But once again, hey, thank you, Ken. I think these these uniforms are are really cool. So, hey, uh, it's Friday, so happy weekend, everybody. Looks like it's going to be a, a windy one for me, so maybe not much flying. So a little little tinkering in here. I'm going to go visit my mom this uh, uh, this weekend, t tomorrow night, and uh, keep the days open for flying, but looks like I might get uh, get winded winded out. So, hey, uh, throughout the comments this past week, the question of um, putting a switch in your plane between your speed control and uh, and your receiver, kind of like I demonstrated uh, a few videos back, and someone said, you know, how can you, how how should it be done? How should it be wired? And I'll show you. So, anyways, the first example is the the E Flight Apprentice, which was my first plane, and and probably several of you guys' first planes. It's, it's awesome. It comes with a switch. And it's between the speed control and the receiver and I guess it's there because you know it's a bottom feeder so you put your battery in the bottom and then flip it over and get everything ready and then you turn the switch and it'll do the AS3X safe select dances so unlike the other planes that don't have the switch and you put the battery in the bottom you flip it over and then it initializes this one won't initialize until you flip the switch. So you can put a switch in uh, in any of them, and I'll show you on my test plane right now. Had to put the apprentice back in its uh in its home up there. All right, we got the famous foam board RC airplane. Brutus just came in checking on me here. Demonstration plane. So what we have here is a brushless motor. We have a speed control and obviously our battery and out of the speed control is a servo lead and it is going into this switch and then out of the switch goes into the receiver so let's power on the transmitter plug in the battery and the motor made some noise but the plane didn't all right, so let's hit the switch. Now it initializes. And then there's the there's the throttle. So, let me show you guys some close-ups on this switch. All right, so you get your servo lead right here. And then the only the only wire that is going through the switch is the positive. The signal and the ground are bypassing the switch. So the signal that, get, that gets broken with the switch is the positive. So all your data and stuff going from the speed control to the receiver is not interrupted because that is going through the orange wire. And then the ground wire is not interrupted either. And the positive is what's going through the switch. Here's the switch that we just used up close. And you can see that only the positive is what is what's being broken by the switch. Now let me show you guys some other switches here, just so just so you don't uh, accidentally buy something you don't need. Alrighty, th several different flavors here. So you you want to make sure you get three wires. Here is a common switch that is easily accessible but it only has two wires so you need to need to make sure if you're gonna buy one of these switches here's one with all three wires this was a cool one that came from 
spectrum or whatever, and it comes with all the all the stuff to mount it in the side of your plane. These are mainly set for glow planes. It's, you know, there's a, a pigtail hanging out to charge your uh, battery pack that operates your servos if you're running a, a, a glow engine. And this is another one with three wires, and it has a place to charge your, your uh, battery pack right there if you were using it in a glow plane. But I'm just showing you, you want to make sure that you get three wires. And here's one here that my friend bought, thinking that he was going to replace the switch in, uh, in his apprentice. And it only has two wires, so things to look out for. If, if you want to do a switch, what I just showed you, you need to make sure it has all three wires, the positive, negative, and the signal. All right, well, that was uh, Switches 101, I guess. So just make sure if you're going to buy one, get uh, three wires. So that way you know you got your, your positive, your negative, and your signal. And then the conversation came up, could you use a switch with the smart speed control? And I've never done it. So I, I think you, you could. You know, I mean, the, the signal wire is not being interrupted and the ground is not being interrupted only the power and there's really not any data that is transferred back and forth on the power wire so it probably is okay you know it wouldn't hurt to try it's not gonna not gonna mess anything up so but definitely on all the other speed controls uh no problemo so i guess that's uh that's all we got for this one hey guys 988 subscribers <laughs> so any day now, we're going to hit the 1,000, and then the FMS Avanti Jet is going to go home to somebody. So, hey, uh, I got I got a favor to ask of uh, you guys, and it never hurts to ask, so that's why I'm doing it. I'm in the market to buy a vehicle. I need a vehicle to be able to take my mom around. I don't have a vehicle that she can get into. Um, getting her in my truck is not possible. And my little minivan is for the airplanes only. I mean, that thing is not very reliable at all. So that's not, not out of the question. So I'm in the market to buy a vehicle, and I'm actively looking right now. Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, you know, the Internet, and, and I want to get something in the next couple weeks. So maybe one of you guys have a, uh, a good used vehicle for sale. It needs to be an SUV because I need the room to put her walker in there. And we're talking about maybe getting her uh, some kind of a motorized scooter and maybe get a ramp that goes into the hitch or something. So I need something reliable with low miles and a good deal. And if it's a good, you know, good enough deal, you know, I'll fly to wherever you're at and, and, we can, uh, and we can, you know, do some business. So I'm definitely in the market and uh, I'm going to buy something within the next couple weeks. So maybe... One of you guys have uh, you know, have something sitting around that you haven't driven in a while and you were talking about selling it and and there you go. You know it's gonna go to a good home. You know, I rented a Chevy Traverse, it was a 2018, that's what I drove to California back to get my mom. That would be ideal, something like that. Probably not that new because that's a little out of my price range. But if someone had like a you know a 2008 or a 2012 you know, something like that size, you know, the Ford Explorer, that Chevy Traverse, something that a hitch can go on the back for, you know, the, the rack for the scooters to go on, you know, not an electric wheelchair, but a, a, a scooter of some sort, where it's not, not as bulky and it can get around the house easier. So, you know, it's kind of, kind of embarrassing to say that I don't have a vehicle to take my mom around, but, but I don't, and I haven't had to yet. Uh, when I did take her around to doctors and and stuff right when I got her here I kept the rental car for a couple weeks longer and unfortunately she broke her hip <laughs> and I haven't had to take her anywhere she's been in the hospital and now she's in a skilled nursing facility doing rehab so if you don't know my mom's situation she has Parkinson's and uh, another condition called vertigo and with that comes a bunch, a bunch of bunch of other bad stuff you know dementia and just it just sucks and she's lived across country in California and then I haven't seen her in like four years until this past August and then she called and said her husband passed away she wanted to move here and then I drove out there and I was like whoa 
uh, had no clue what her condition was. And anyways, six or seven weeks later, I had her back here, and uh, things were starting to get smooth, and then she fell and broke her hip, and now it's not smooth. So anyways, I need a vehicle, and uh, if you guys have one, let me know. You know. On the main page of my YouTube, you'll find my email in the About section. So if you go to like my main channel homepage, you can find my email. So. All right, guys. Hey, I got a lot of uh, a lot of video ideas in the pipeline for this weekend, so stay tuned. All right, guys. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, Ken, awesome. All right, guys. Hey, until next time, you'll see me here. There it is, right there. All right.